uh, the, we're going to talk about the Plon Arnold modified Wilson osteotomy, which is a minimally invasive procedure for bunions. It is a V-shaped osteotomy. Here is your V, and the um, apex points proximally. So this is the apex, and here is the V. It's in the transverse plane, and the head of the first metatarsal is then displaced laterally to reduce the intermetatarsal angle. Here is uh, what it looks like uh, from the dorsal lateral point of view. Here's the apex, and here's the, um, the dorsal osteotomy and the plantar osteotomy. Its indications are for a mild to moderate hallux abducto valgus deformity. The first metatarsal phalangeal joint should be flexible or you won't get a good result. Uh, and moderately, a mild to moderately increased metatarsus primus varus angle. If you use it for a severe bunion, you won't get as good a result, and if it's track bound, you will not get as good a result. You know, the, the procedure was originally described uh, by an orthopedic surgeon named Wilson in England in 1963. It was basically an oblique osteotomy uh, from medial to pr uh, distal medial to proximal lateral. Uh, it was suggested by Dr. Weil of Chicago to Drs. Uh, Kessler, Plon, and Arnold in the 70s that it might make an interesting, minimally invasive uh, procedure. Uh, Plon and Arnold modified the procedure so that uh, it, it, from a, a, an oblique osteotomy to a V-shaped osteotomy to give it more stability. Uh, they made a fail-safe hole at the neck of the uh, metatarsal to start the osteotomy, and we'll get it. We'll skip a couple of these. Um, it's designed to be performed under local anesthesia in the office. You can do it with an ankle block or with local uh, infiltration and a, and a modified Mayo block. These are the keys, the most important parts of the uh, instrumentation. This is a short Shannon burr, which is used. You can combine the procedure with an Aiken osteotomy, so you use the short Shannon for the Aiken. This is a medium Shannon Burr, or Shannon 44, which, with which you make the osteotomy of the neck of the metatarsal. And this is a three millimeter wedge burr, which can be used to remodel the, uh, the hyperostosis, the, the, dorsal medium, the dorsal medial eminence. Uh, this is a lock elevator, which I use to free up the capsule from the head of the first metatarsal. You can also smooth the bump with a short caudal nasal rasp. And this is a very interesting piece of equipment. It's called an eye magnet. Uh, this is not a procedure for beginners, and it should be performed with fluoroscopy. This is my, uh, from 1986, my, um, my handheld fluoroscope, which thank goodness still works. Uh, the equipment for performing the osteotomy should be a high torque, low speed machine. Uh, I'd like to draw landmarks before I start. This is the plantar medial cortex. This is the dorsal medial cortex. This is the lateral cortex. This is the extensor hallucis longus tendon. And here is your osteotomy, the V pointing proximally. And this is the dorsal <coughs> part of the osteotomy. And this is your first metatarsal phalangeal joint. Uh, I start by making an incision. Uh, with a number 15 blade halfway between the dorsal medial and, dor and, and the plantar medial cortices. This is for the fail safe or pilot hole. Then I begin making the pilot hole with a Shannon 44 uh, burr from medial to lateral, halfway between the dorsal and plantar cortices, and this is showing on a saw bones. Uh, I'm trying to make it at a 90 degree angle to the long axis of the second metatarsal because that is the, uh, the, the long axis of the foot for all intents and purposes. You can, you can change the osteotomy angle from uh, proximal, medial to distal lateral to reduce shortening, but you'll find it is diff more difficult to displace the metatarsal head laterally if you do that. Uh, so here we are start, we've done the fail-safe pull from medial to lateral, from the medial cortex through the lateral cortex with one burr and then we switch burrs. And here the burr, here's what it looks like. Uh, the, it, it's basically parallel to the supporting surface of the ground. You can plantar flex it slightly if you want to. And here I've made a second incision, a little um, dorsal to the first incision for the purpose of remodeling the bump. 
I used to make it dorsally. Now our, our Spanish colleagues have taught us that you're less likely to cause any damage if you do it plantarly. If you do it plantarly. So now I make the second incision plantarly. It's difficult to remove. It's easier to do uh, remodel the first metatarsal head through uh, a second incision than through the original incision. Uh, and here you can see the two incisions. Really, you don't have to make it much wider than uh, the width of a number 15 blade. You can make it wider if you need to. Uh, here I'm uh, putting the lock elevator in, and pushing it through under the capsule to free up the, um, the, the medial eminence. And uh, this is a Shannon 44. I'm beginning to reduce the bump, the, the, the medial eminence with a Shannon 44 and then I continue using a three millimeter wedge burr because it's easier to remove uh, bone. I, I, I remove part of the bump before I perform the osteotomy and then after I've uh, completed the osteotomy I'll remove whatever is left and the reason I do that is because you don't need to remove the whole bump. Once you displace the head laterally you will find that a lot of the eminence does not need to be removed and I'll show that in a few minutes. And here we're starting the osteotomy. We're pivoting from the original osteotomy site and we're going uh, in a dorsal um, uh, distal direction, cutting the, the, the dorsal half of the lateral cortex. And then we continue the osteotomy uh, across the dorsal cortex from lateral to medial. Again, we're pivoting through that osteotomy site, through the original failsafe hole. And then we, f uh, we finish the dorsal uh, cut in the dorsal uh, medial uh, portion of the uh, cortex. So we've now completed uh, half of the osteotomy. So then we go back with another burr, a third burr, into the original fail-safe hole or pilot hole, and we're going to cut the plantar surface. And you can see these are the sesamoids. And so we start cutting. Again, we're pivoting from the original osteotomy site we're cutting the inferior lateral cortex and then cutting from lateral to medial, cutting through the plantar cortex and then finally through the uh, plantar, uh, through the medial inferior cortex so that to complete the osteotomy and there's the completed osteotomy. The only thing I do slightly differently is the inferior cut I try to angulate slightly distally just short of the sesamoids because by making it a little bit more distal angle, it locks it in better and, and, and contributes to more stability. Then you uh, displace the, um, the capital fragment laterally. And you, you, before you might have removed this entire bump, but then you would have a big shelf, proximal shelf. So I, you, you remove a little bit of it, push it over, and then you can remodel whatever is left uh, once you've displaced it. Now you do not, you can fixate it or you can do it non-fixated. If you're not fixating it, then you would jam the capital fragment onto the proximal uh, part of the osteotomy. And there can be, uh, when you remove this, there can be a proximal ledge. And if you can palpate it, you should try to remove it because the patient may feel it in their shoes. And you can do that with a short Shannon. Uh, the procedure, by the way, can be uh, combined with an Aiken osteotomy, a lateral release, and or an ex extensor hallucis longus lengthening. And here I'm remodeling the bump after I've uh, uh, after I perform the osteotomy. And you can per, you can K use K wire fixation. Most or, or many surgeons do not use K wires. I do because I, I get a more predictable result. So I use two K, uh, K wires and here's the, the first K wire, and here's the second K wire. As long as you put it in an oblique angle, it'll hold in most cases. Uh, if you do not use, uh, well, okay, we, we, we tape the foot for six weeks. I have the patient back uh, four or five days later for a checkup, and then once a week for five weeks. And on, when, on the sixth week, they take it off at home. Uh, you wrap with gauze, and this is called DuraPort tape. Uh, 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 a non a hypoallergenic tape and you can keep the the, the great toe uh, uh, hyper adducted and it will help to hold the metatarsal in position 
if you are using K wires, then you want to pat, you want to put God's padding <coughs> distal and proximal to the K wires to relieve pressure against the wires uh, because it will irritate the patient. So then you have a bulkier dressing. And if you're concerned about cracking the shelf, you can use a dancer's pad to relieve, to reduce pressure from uh, the ground reactive forces. So you're less likely to crack the dorsal cortex, especially with an older person. At uh, the wires come out in three weeks, and at the three-week point, I begin a range of motion exercises. The patient uses their contralateral hand to do uh, exercises. Uh, for six minutes twice a day, a minute down, a minute up, alternating for six minutes twice a day till I tell them to stop. Advantages of minimally invasive surgery for bunions, smaller incisions, you have smaller scars. If you think like a patient, uh, pa the doctors say, well, the scar heals from side to side, not end to end, but the patient's like a nicer looking foot. Uh, with the smaller incisions, you have less soft tissue trauma in most cases less soft tissue trauma results in less post-operative pain. Most patients will not require narcotics. Casts are not necessary. It can be performed under local anesthetic in an outpatient setting. And I've got some before and after. This is uh, uh, pre-op and post-op, and the key is to have nail polish on all your post-op patients because it looks better. Uh, one year post-op. Uh, and here's the pre-op x-ray and uh, Wilson osteotomy with K-wire fixation, Aiken osteotomy, maybe I did an adductor, I don't remember. It's important to look at the lateral, make sure the head is uh, in the right position. This is one year post-op and you can see the head, uh, the head is not elevated and it looks pretty good. And this is the same patient. Uh, here's a second patient before and here's the osteotomy. You can see the V right here uh, with the K-wire fixation and Aiken osteotomy. I try to leave the Aiken intact, the, lat the lateral cortex intact. This is one year post-op uh, comparison. This lady had um, a really a, a more severe bunion deformity with an overriding toe. I did her other foot years ago. It didn't look beautiful, but she said, I want you to do it, so I did it again. I mean, I did the other foot, and it came out pretty well. Uh, uh, this is before. And this is three months post-op and seven months post-op. It was just done in 2012. I'll have her back for another uh, x-ray one of these days. And so it looks pretty good. Uh, what I did was um, a Wilson and an Aiken and a doctor release and the osteotomies two and three. And uh, uh, for the toes, I did an osteotomy at the base of the proximal phalanx and at the neck of the proximal phalanx. And I think I did the base of the proximal phalanx on the third toe. And this lady, the, the, the exciting part of this is not that she had a bunion, but she came in to see me in 1988 and had her first bunion done. And she came back um, within the last year, 24 years later, to have the second bunion done. So this is the pre-op <coughs> of, of the left foot and the Wilson with the K-wire fixation and Aiken. But the interesting thing is we did her, I did her right foot in 1988. Here's pre-op. Um, and I also, it was everything. I can't tell if I did a fifth met here or not. Well, let's see. I don't think, I don't know if I did or not, but here's the, but we didn't use, K, I didn't use K-wires back in 1988, but here's the procedure. And it did heal one year later and you can see the head has healed in a very nice position. And this is what it looked like 24 years later. So it's, uh, and here it is. This is the uh, pre-op in 1988. This is post-op in 2012. So it, it, the, the procedures do have longevity if you use the right procedure with the right foot. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about this type of uh, surgery, I recommend this book, Minimally Invasive Surgery of the Foot and Ankle. Dr. Domenico is familiar with it, um, edited by Mafuli and Easley, and a second version came out with just the forefoot. Uh, the Academy of Ambulatory Foot and Ankle Surgery is the academy that disseminates this information. Uh, if you're interested, here's the website. Our next seminar is in New Orleans in January 2014. 
If anybody has any questions, please feel free to email me. This is my website and my YouTube, cha YouTube channel. Uh, thank you very much.